Okay, and welcome to the final episode of On a Rail for this Half-Life Let's Play brought to you by Podcast 17 and Planet Philip. Um, like I said, this is the final episode, so we can all rejoice in happiness. I just want to recap for anybody who hasn't been watching, you know, straight, in case they forgot. The the goal of On a Rail is to eventually reach a rocket, a rocket silo or a missile silo to launch a rocket to try to close the dimensional gap um, or the dimensional breach that the Zen creatures are coming through that the Nihilith has opened. Um, so we're going to be doing that at the end of this chapter. So this is a really cool part and actually quite difficult, um, to be honest. We'll see here that there's, there's a grunt there and there's another grunt inside that little thing. So I try to get this grunt first. Pop from box to box here. If you hide long enough, he'll eventually just break these boxes. But we don't want him to do that. There we go. And lose a lot of health, so that's good. Um, so now we can break these boxes. Oops. Seems kind of loud. Let me check the audio for a sec. Nope, it's the same. Okay, no problem. This is always a bug that happens to me. You see those blue lines? Yeah, right there. Um, it has something to do with the trip mines, and I've never really been able to understand what's going on here. I mean, there's no trip mines here. I can't trip them. Um, so I don't know what it is. And they're not always in the same spot. Sometimes they're over this way. Anyway, not a big deal. Here's a little grunt uh, outpost. Okay, so interestingly enough, um, the voice actors that were just doing that... Um, actually, let's kill them off first. So here, here are the two guys that were talking. Again, talking about Gordon Freeman and how he's gone around killing uh, grunts, just like we killed them. Um, interesting enough, one of the voice actors for that little uh, sequence there was Michael Chaparro. Um, Michael, Sh Michael Chaparro is a really important voice actor in the Half-Life series. He did, um, with, with uh, Harry S. Robbins, um, Michael Chaparro did the Black Mesa security guards, both Barney and Otis. He did the G-Man, the Nihilith, um, the HEC, HECU sh soldiers um, in that sit situation where they were talking together, Black Mesa scientists, um, the male Black Ops with Harry S. Robbins again, and he did Barney Calhoun in Half-Life 2 and the G-Man in Half-Life 2. So this guy has done so many voices in Half-Life and it often goes unnoticed. You can check out like his full profile over on the Half-Life wiki. Um, also check out uh, Harry S. Robbins' uh, profile as well. But uh, Michael Chaparro, wow. Just just like a huge range of voices that, uh, that you would never guess. A lot of people would never guess that Barney Calhoun is voiced by the G-Man. Or the same guy who does the G-Man as well. This is a cool bit. Up there is a sniper. Um, he's not going to shoot me yet until I get close. So we're going to see. you going to shoot me now? Sometimes. No. Oh, there he goes. So. I don't usually let him shoot me too much. Because <laughs> it really starts to hurt. Just get that health kit. Alright, so we're at the missile silo. This is the missile silo down there in the sunken area. And, uh. Oh shit. Oh shit. They don't give you much room to uh, retreat onto. Oh fuck. I don't know where he was shooting. <laughs> um, again, alternatively, you can just rush to this and go, whoa bam! But, uh, we didn't do that this time. So, um, a lot of the speedrunners like to glitch this area because what you can do is uh, you can well, bunny hop up the whole thing, eventually get up here, and the rocket button, the button to launch the rocket is right against, right behind this wall, and you can hit it. If I hit E right now, I'd launch the rocket. Um, but we don't want to do that. We want to do it right. Um, 
But I'll show you another instance in the same area where you can actually use things through walls. Just a little puzzle here that uh, you have to avoid the, the red lasers to get to avoid blowing up yourself. Um, the easiest way of doing this is just jumping up here and then up the top. More Michael Chaparro. Actually, I'm not sure if that's Michael Chaparro or Harry S. Robbins. It's hard to, it's hard to tell the difference. Okay, so here's like a little control center where uh, where you can see all the satellite status. And you'll see here that satellite array is offline, um, and the satellite portal array is offline. And you've got uh, two portals orbiting and one portal stationary. Or, sorry, two satellites orbiting and one satellite stationary. It's really unclear whether or not these are satellites that are already in the air or satellites that you have to launch later. Because in Half-Life 1, you launch one satellite. Um, to try to close the Zen portal. And in Half-Life 2, you launch another satellite. Um, so those could be these, like predicted satellites, or maybe they're ones that are already there plus the ones. And I don't know what this stationary one is. It's like a geosynchronous orbit satellite, anyway. Or sorry, non-geosynchronous orbit satellite. Um, it's it, cool nonetheless. And then also it's a satellite uh, portal array, this, and the array status is offline. Even when we launch the rocket, it'll still say array status offline. Um, because the reason is, the radars on the ground have not yet been linked with, uh, with the satellites. And you actually do that in the Half-Life 1 demo called Uplink, um, which we will be let's playing as well, in that you use uh, a ground station radar array to interface with the satellites that are in geosynchronous orbit around the Earth to close the portal. So it's, it's a really cool tie-in that a lot of people miss that connection as well. Um, and this is what I was talking about before, this, this health kit, using it through the wall. You can use it right here. So, give you an idea. And here's that button. So, we can go ahead and launch the rocket. Climb up here to watch the fireworks. Couple things, there's a Lambda symbol there, which is cool. U.S. flag, NASA symbol. Very neat. So now that satellite's in orbit, everybody's happy. Wait for the door to open. So like I said, again, it doesn't say that they're online, um, but that's because they're not interfaced yet. Get some victory music. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Oh, I missed a box. So you'll see now that these blast doors are open. No idea why or what caused that to happen. <laughs> but uh, it just gives us a way out, I guess. Get some goodies. Mostly explosives and health and armor and stuff. Okay, so we're going to end the Let's Play here. Um, the next chapter is Apprehension. Um, it actually triggers as you're riding this super tram. Um, I don't want to ruin it just yet. I want it to all be a surprise for you guys, for anybody who hasn't played it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to stop here, and the next episode will be Apprehension. So we are complete... Well, tech, not technically, but practically. We're practically completed the On A Real chapters. Thanks for watching. Thanks for powering through it with me. And uh, I guarantee that Half-Life will get a lot more interesting in the next couple chapters.